Hi, welcome back to the class of biological control. So, in the last class, we knew about the biological control, its definition, little bit of history, then the concepts, and one of the important biocontrol agent that is a predator, their groups, and their importance. Now, in this class, let us know about the another important biocontrol agent that is a parasitoid and what are the different categories of parasitoids we get based on the different parameters and some of the important parasitoids which have been employed in the biocontrol program. So, what is a parasitoid? So, this is a little bit confusion which occurs because we all are quite familiar with a word called parasite and then what is this parasitoid. So, the parasite if you actually define it is an any organism which take shelter in another organism which we call it as a host for its food and the protection. But however, in parasite it actually does not lead to the death of the host. Whereas, the word parasitoid which has been coined in insects is especially those organisms which either any of their stages in the life cycle which take shelter and the food on the other host which we call it as a prey and ultimately kills it. So, the most important difference that we get between a parasite and parasitoid is that in case of parasitoid there will be an ultimate death of the host which occurs. Okay. So, some insect groups we actually identify it which are quite potential parasitoids on the insect groups or the defoliators or the pest herbivores. So, which we actually utilize them in the biocontrol program. Now, what are the important qualities that we have to look into while selecting a parasitoid? Some of the important characteristics of parasitoid, it should have a very good host searching capacity because so it should actually seek the host and then parasitize it then only we get a good control and it should have a host specificity in the sense it should basically a major parasitoid on the key pest on which that we actually is been released or recommended. It should have an universal adaptability in the sense a wider adaptability for the parasitoid in order to withstand the abiotic and the biotic factors. It should have a good dispersal ability that means after multiplication this parasitoid should be able to disperse itself and find the other host and then controls it. Then it should be an amenability to the mass culture which is quite important in the sense. So, it should be easily mass cultured under the laboratory condition so that we can release it in enormous number in the field. It should also be able to withstand the competition with the other species of parasitoids and also should have an ability to outnumber the pest that means it should have a quick multiplication rate and so that it suppress the pest within a shorter period of time and a better survival capacity is also a very important characteristic of an insect parasitoid. Now, so another important aspect that we actually should know is a difference between a parasitoid and a predator. So, which organism we call it as a parasitoid and which we should call it as a predator. So, the important differences are given here. So, in this case, so you look at a predator and a parasitoid. Always in case of predators, they are bigger than their prey whereas, in case of parasitoids they are smaller than its host. In case of this the organism on which the parasitoid takes shelter we call it as host and usually predator will be very active because it has to actively seek the host and kill it and then feed it. Generally the parasitoids initially they will be active, but once they actually starts colonizing on the host then they will be sluggish and then they will start feeding on it. In case of predators, the organ of locomotives and the sense organs and as well as the mouth parts are well developed, whereas in case of parasitoids, so they are not so well developed because they will be either taking shelter inside or outside the body of the host. Then habitat in case of predator is independent of its prey, it means they will be living some way whenever they want food they come and then feed on the prey and then they go back to their habitat, whereas in parasitoids because it is a constantly in association with the host. So, the habitat will remain same and life cycle in case of predator will be a longer one whereas, here it should be a shorter because it has to complete its life cycle before the completion of a particular stage of the host. In this case a single predator 
may actually attack a several host in a shorter period that means it feeds on more number of individuals whereas in parasitide it usually develop on a single host. Now let us look at the different types of parasitides that we get. So these categories of parasitides can be made based on certain parameters for example based on the developmental site in the host they may be classified as an ectoparasitide or endoparasitide. So ectoparasitides are those species where the immature stages or the developmental stages are found on the host itself say like you can see here this is the host on which we are seeing the grubs or the immature stages of the host I mean the parasitoid which are feeding on it. So this you normally see it in a species called Bracon brevicornis on the coconut black headed caterpillars. The endoparasitoid is those groups where the feeding stage are found within the body of the host and they are not being exposed. So that is one category that we can make it. Similarly, so based on the stages of the host attacked, so they may be called as an egg parasitide, so wherein the parasitides only attack the egg stage of the host like the trichogramma species that you are seeing. So they actually lay the eggs on the eggs of their host and on which they complete all the development and adult will come out. Most of the, uh, the trichogrammatidae species and as well as ciliaridae species they are an egg parasitides and this is quite useful because so they are going to kill the host which are actually the pest in agricultural ecosystem well before they start actually causing the damage. Then the second one is an egg larval parasitide. In this case the parasitide will lay the eggs on the eggs of the host but however they will continue their life cycle and then they emerge when the host becomes in larval stage. This you normally get it in some Braconidae and as well as some Encertidae. Now the third one is a larval parasitide. This is the most common uh, the parasitoids that we get and there is a large species of parasitoids will actually come under the larval parasitide. In this case, so they lay the eggs on the larval stage, the development of the parasitides takes place on the larval stage and the emergence will also takes place on the larval stage. Some good example that we gave is a Bethylidae, it is a Goniosa snephantidis that you are seeing here a serious good parasitoid on the coconut black headed caterpillar and Campolitis chloridae under Ichneumonidae group is also a larval parasitoid and under Plastic Astridae so you also get a good parasitoids. Similarly you can also have a another group that is a Braconidae which is quite common a larval parasitoid seen on many of the insect pests. Then the fourth group that we can make is a larval pupal parasitoid where the parasitoid lay the eggs on the larval stage but the adults will emerge when the host will enter into the pupal stage. And the fourth category you get is a pupal parasitide where the parasitide mainly attacks the pupal stage of the host and it completes its development. Chalcididae is another group which is a pupal parasitide and Epiricanidae is another group which is a pupal parasitide. Then you also have the nymphal and the adult parasitide in the sense the, these parasitides mainly attacks the bug group that is at the nymphal stage and as well as the adults of the hemipterans. In some of the dipteran groups also you do get as a larval pupal parasitide such as Sturmiopsis inferens, so which is quite commonly used in the biocontrol program. Now based on the host specificity, so the parasitide can be classified as a monophagous parasitide, oligophagous parasitide or a polyphagous parasitide. In case of monophagous parasitide they are highly host specific attacking a single host species that means they are quite specific and if you are actually released on a particular species they only take care or they control that one. For example the Parasiola nephantidis which is a monophagous parasitide on Opicina arenocella that is a coconut black headed caterpillar. And there are other groups of parasitides which are oligophagous that means they have a restricted group of a related host species on which they parasitize. But some parasitides are polyphagous they attack wide variety of the host species such as the trichogramma species which is an egg parasitide that we have seen. For, for the successful biological control program so we have to choose 
uh, this type of the parasitoid, which type of parasitoid that we need, either it should be a monophagous, oligophagous or the polyphagous. Next the fourth categorization we can make it based on the host as the primary parasitoid, secondary parasitoid or the tertiary parasitoid. A primary parasitoid is a one which actually a parasitizing a pest, so which we call it as a primary parasitoid. But a secondary parasitoid, it is a parasitoid which attacks an another parasitoid, but this is quite harmful, we cannot use it in the biocontrol program. Whereas the tertiary parasitoid is a parasitoid which attacks the secondary parasitoid and this is quite useful to us. So, all parasitoids whose hosts are parasitoids are referred as the hyper parasitoids. Now, the fifth category is like based on the number of parasitoids that are developing from a single host. So, we can classify it as a solitary parasitoid or as a gregarious parasitoid. Solitary means a single individual will comes out from an host. So, this is uh, the one whereas in gregarious parasitoids the several progenies are completing its development on a single host. So, like this. Now, based on the kinds of parasitism, we are classifying it as a simple parasitism, super parasitism and multi parasitism. Simple parasitism is applied when there is a single attack of the parasitoid on the host irrespective of the number of eggs laid. It might lay a single egg or it might lay several egg, but there is a single attack. Super parasitism, when many individuals of the same species attack a parasitoid on a single host, then it is called as a super parasitism. Multi parasitism, it is attack of a parasitoid on an insect host, which is already been a parasitized, which is not quite good for the biocontrol program. Now, some of the important parasitoids which have been recognized, they are mass produced and their dosages also have been fixed against certain crop pest. For example, the Trichogramma piculonis, a very useful egg parasitoid which has been used against the shoot borers or the stem borers and it should be released at the rate of 1.5 to 2.5 lakhs per hectare. There is another egg parasitoid Trichogramma japonicum which is recommended against yellow stem borer in paddy is also recommended at the same dosage. Similarly, the Goniosa nephantitis which is a larval parasitoid is used at an inoculative rate of about 15 to 20 individuals or the adults per plant. Similarly, we have Bricon bevicornis, Bricon habitor, Kilonis black burning, then the Cotacea plutella and all these they have been multiplied and artificially they are released into a different agricultural ecosystem at a different dosage. And if you look at these dosages, some are actually the inundative release where we actually uh, they release it in order to get a quick control and whereas, in some cases we have an inoculative release where this is actually followed in a perennial ecosystem for a slow and steady control. So far, so in this class we studied about the parasitoid, their categories and their qualification. So, in the next class let us look at another important biocontrol agent that is the microbial pathogen and study about the categories, their mode of action and some how they can be implemented in the integrated pest management. Thank you.